All right, welcome back to Salt City Counseling, everybody. My name is Scott Carter. If you're new here, I'm a licensed therapist here in the beautiful state of Utah. Salt City Counseling is my company. I want to do uh, shoot off a quick video before I go to work. If the if you're used to watching my videos, I'm gonna scoot in closer. I had to replace my microphone, so I had some technical difficulties, and I want to make sure I'm nice and close to the new mic. But anyways. I got a viewer question for this video. This one has to do with borderline personality disorder or BPD. And it has to do with high conflict, divorce and custody. I had someone send me an email. I'm going to allow this person to remain anonymous and I will cover some of the email that was sent to me. So thank you. Uh, if you're watching this, I'm sure you know who you are. Thank you for the viewer question. Thank you for um, reaching out to me and sending the email. If you are someone who wants to send me a an email to have something covered in a video, Scott C at SaltCityCounseling.com. You'll remain anonymous. I will withhold as much information as possible to uh, so that it's difficult to identify you if that's how you wish to do it. I got permission from this person to cover this material in this email. And so uh, this, this particular individual has um, mainly questions about being a step parent or being a step mom to kids whose mom or the ex-wife to this person's husband uh, allegedly has borderline personality disorder or BPD. Now, uh, the nature of this question has to do with trying to step parent. I've been contacted by other step parents. They're, they really, really struggle to navigate the situation or know what to do, what's best, um, how to conduct themselves, what to say, what to not say, what to do, how to approach situations. This one has, and this this video has to do with with that step kid relationship and how to navigate some of this stuff. So I'm gonna get into that. Before I do, uh, help me out. Go subscribe to my other channel, Wisdom and Brews. The link is in the description below. If you're going through a high conflict of custody or divorce situation, I have Udemy courses. Those links are in the description below. Also, if you really like my content. Please hit that tip jar. It will help enable me to keep content like this moving. And for those that have already donated, thank you so much. I super duper appreciate it. It helps me out a ton. And so uh, I, f I feel like that's all the business that I have. I feel like there was one more. Yeah, if you want to submit a question, scottc at saltcitycounseling.com. And obviously like, subscribe, share, all that comment. Uh, help me grow my channel. And... So without further ado, the nature of this question again has to do with like trying to be a step parent when your husband's ex has borderline personality disorder or BPD. Specifically in this question, um, she states that the youngest stepchild at the wedding asked, can I call you mom? And then uh, a little over three years later is now giving uh, new stepmom, basically the silent treatment, won't make eye contact, won't acknowledge, won't talk, won't anything, and uh, kind of struggling with this situation. Now, this may go without saying, uh, particularly for the person writing the email, but I, th but what you have to take into account as a step parent is that if you are now marrying someone who has uh, divorced someone who has a uh, personality disorder, narcissism, borderline, antisocial, but I generally find this is most true with borderline. Um, less true with, with narcissism because a narcissist will not admit this. And, and when I say this, I mean your, your high, the high conflict ex or, or the one that has a personality disorder, they're going to be threatened by you immediately just, for, just by being there. Even if you haven't done anything to earn it or deserve it or whether you have said bad things about them, whether you have, have or have not, whatever actions you have taken or not taken, immediately right off the bat, they are going to be threatened by you. Now, someone who has borderline is going to be a little bit more overt in their actions about this feeling threatened by you, whereas a narcissist is less likely to do so because that would require them to actually show some vulnerability and they will avoid doing that at all costs. But rest assured, narcissists are threatened by virtually everybody in virtually every situation. And the narcissistic side of borderline, um, they will automatically, right off the bat, be threatened by you. Um, they perceive real or or imagined abandonment. And in your case, right, if, if you have a kid at the wedding, if the youngest stepkid at the wedding is like, "Can I call you mom?" Now this this presents an issue. And to me, the issue is 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 that um, this kid, this, this, if this kid 
has started, and it, let's say that you're at the wedding, okay? Let's rewind the tape, apparently three plus years later, and the kid says, can I call you mom at the wedding? Now, in my book, there's there's not really a, I mean, I wouldn't tell a kid no. Like, I, I wouldn't be like, no! <laughs> I If it was me, if I was, like, if the shoe was on my foot, I might say, you know what, just call me Scott. Just call me Scott. Um, cause here's the thing, uh, if you say, yeah, call me mom, and I know, uh, hindsight's 2020, but, but maybe this video will benefit other people, uh, but if the kid says, uh, can I call you mom, and you know real mom, like has borderline, I would just say, no, you, you know, it's fine, just call me by my first name, you can just call me, that'll be fine, um, you do already have a mom, is, is what I would say, um, because here's the thing, here, here's the issue, is if that kid starts calling you mom or, or maybe dad or whatever and then goes to their high conflict parent, borderline narcissist, whatever, and refers to you as mom or dad, they are going to receive absolute hell. And um, when in this, in this uh, email, she describes that the kid no longer talks, gives eye contact, won't acknowledge, uh, awkward, awkward silences between them in the home. No interactions. That to me sounds like a kid who was really, really taking it from the, the BPD mom. If mom, if BPD mom finds out that's happening, she will let the kid have it. And unfortunately, this is one of the issues that I take with borderline, is that they don't just they don't make any distinction that the, that the child is a child. And if and if I'm really honest, I, I I view borderline as adult children. They, they've never really grown up. They've never really gotten out of that childish mindset. They think like a child. They act like a child. They feel like a child. They have that black and white thinking, the inability to see nuances, the inability to be like, maybe I shouldn't scream at a child. Um, maybe I shouldn't put a child in danger. Maybe this would be would be detrimental. Instead, they always just kind of go with their, what their emotions say. And if that kid goes home and goes, yeah, my new mom, uh, I guarantee you, BPD mom is like, <laughs> right? And... That poor kid, it so, that sounds like a kid that is just absolutely taking the heat. Um, the person that sent this email did not say how old the kid will, kid is. I would be curious to know how old that kid is. That would kind of help me be able to analyze the situation just a little bit better. Um, but as a result, what I'm what I'm betting because this this sounds like, and I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but this sounds like a situation. Where real mom has, has more or less told the child, like, um, you don't love me, you've betrayed me, um, I can't believe you chose her over me. Again, one of the issues with borderline is they're unable to see that, hey, a child can love both. A child can love both parents. They have a really, really hard time with that. They have a really hard time accepting that. But the borderline mom is really threatened by you because they see you as replacing them, and therefore the chi the children abandon her, in uh, for you. So here's here's what I would do. Um, first of all, um, my again, I w I'd be curious to know how how old the kid is that is giving the silent treatment. My general approach to kids is I'm always respectful, I'm always civil, I'm always polite. But I never, ever, ever attempt to make it look like I need their approval. Um, and so sometimes, if the kid is hard on you, that's the safe way about going about things. That's a, it could be a defense mechanism. It could mean that you're the safe one and therefore kind of a compliment, right? If it was me, I would always show unconditional positive regard for that kid. Um, and, and I would more or less show that I was, I would be indifferent about whether they talked to me or approved of me or liked me or not. I would always treat that kid with unconditional positive regard. I would always set the tone for how I wanted the relationship to be and treat that kid like they're just going to come around eventually. Because this may be a maladaptive thing, it may be a defense thing, it may be an attempt to avoid backlash or any type of verbal uh, abuse from the, from the BPD's um, mom. And so that is one of the, that's, that's how I would approach that situation. I would always treat that kid with kindness and respect, unconditional positive regard. Um, I would always, but I would also, and I know this is hard. This, the second part is always hard. I would show, I would try to show that kid that I'm not trying to replace mom. Because there's a good chance mom has put it in that kid's head. I'm trying to replace, right? I'm trying to replace her. 
So I would, I would always, I'd always say, Hey, you know what? You're, I'm glad you have, I'm glad you have a good relationship with your mom or whatever. Right. Even if that's not necessarily the case, uh, because generally speaking, I've seen a lot of kids like I call it the iceberg flips. They go from like super loyal to the high conflict parent to absolutely butting heads and it's, and it's chaos and it's havoc. And, uh, it can, it can happen really quick too. And you see that turn around really quick. That's how I would approach a situation. I would always be patient. I would always do my best to encourage the kid to have a good relationship with, with that, with that other parent. Um, that doesn't mean that you're condoning what they do or agreeing with what they do. It's always just saying, Hey, you know, it's, it's so important to have for kids to have good relationships with both parents, right? Something really neutral like that. I, I, I believe that should be the case for all conflict in, or divorce and custody, all of it. And and if there's one thing that I would say to all parents out there, I don't care how you feel about your ex. It's good for your kids to have positive relationships with both parents. I don't care if you hate your ex-spouse. If you love your kids, you'll get over yourself and help facilitate a positive relationship with that parent. So... That is going to do it for that one. I hope that was helpful again. Um, you know, kids, kids unfortunately, they, they they are the ones that get caught in the middle. They're the ones that kind of usually suffer the most. And I've done videos about that. Anyways, thank you for watching. I got to get to work. Just want to shoot a quick video before I ran off to work. So thank, thanks for watching, everybody. We will uh, see you in the next one.